I made another one. So this is actually the fourth one of these that I've made. So in the last electrothermal accelerator video, I said I'd probably be making more of these. And that was true. But if you'll notice, this says uh, version 4, and it's been several months since that original video came out. I've actually made three more of these, but this video is about this one, and I will explain why. So the main thing I've been trying to upgrade through all of these is the loading mechanism. Reloading the old one was an absolute pain. It muzzle-loaded a projectile, and then the medium it used to generate a plasma was aluminum foil. It discharged the capacitor bank through some aluminum foil, and that exploded the foil and pushed the projectile out. And that worked pretty well, but the thing is I had to reload the aluminum foil every time. And the mechanism I used to put the foil in, basically the chamber that the explosion happened in, was not really optimized at all. To reload the foil, I had to unscrew a screw, put the foil in, screw it back in, and since it wasn't super reliable, I, I usually had to check with the multimeter to make sure the connection was good. And that was annoying. So my first solution was to use kind of a breach system. And then I also decided to trigger it with, instead of a lamp switch, a digital trigger. It's kind of a beefed up transistor with some other features. And people use them in coil guns. So I figured it's kind of the same thing. It should work pretty well here. And it did at first, but coil guns have a coil that it discharges through and that slows and evens out the discharge just a little bit. And so what I think happened was just shorting the capacitor bank outright, it did not appreciate that. So it pretty quickly, it broke, and it might just be that I was over pumping it, I was feeding it too much, but from the rating, I, I thought it would probably be all right, but who knows. Either way, it broke, and that led to, when I was trying to load it, uh, it would explode, and that was really not a pleasant thing to have happen and the breach mechanism never really worked. And then, a little while later, I decided to make another one. I had a new idea. Instead of using aluminum foil, I would just push an aluminum rod into another electrode, and so the aluminum rod would be the fuel, so I wouldn't have to reload it, and I could trigger it by just a trigger that pushes it into the electrode. And I actually got that one working a little bit. It had some problems, and it was also very weak, and I think I probably could have improved it, but it had some other problems, and so I set it away for later, thinking, I'll, I'll fix that later. I'll make it work eventually. That, of course, it never happens. It didn't happen. It has now been scrapped mostly for parts. And that brings us on to this one. Yes, I've got heartaches by the number A love that I can't win But the day that I stop counting That's the day my world will end Charging. The smoke is coming off of it. That's kind of a lot of smoke, actually. It should be fine. Okay. Charging off. Safety off. So I'm going to do the explaining of how it works, and then I'll shoot at things. So the principle, though, is pretty much the same as the first one. It's an electrothermal accelerator. It uses a violent plasma pulse explosion thing in here, and then the expanding gases of that push a thing out the end. And in the first one, I used little pieces of a steel rod that I had wrapped some tape around to make them make a, have a seal with the barrel. And then I had sharpened them. This one, I had a somewhat less smooth brain moment. I actually got the barrel size, so it just fits commercially available steel BBs. So I can use that in there. And it just so happens, the metal rod I had last time actually fits properly in this without tape. So I could have just use this in the beginning and it all would have been better. But, so I just used, I believe it's 1.77 caliber, 4.5 millimeter, any of those projectiles, they fit in here. And I got some special, um, I got some special pellet gun pellet projectiles that are supposed to be used in hunting air guns to put in this. So something about this one is that it does not use aluminum foil to generate a plasma. It generates it in this chamber using just a spark gap. 
and it's a little confusing on how it works. I think it's confusing because I didn't actually come up with this circuit. I'd like to say that I modified it, I made my own improvements to it, but I kind of didn't. It's really just entirely lifted from a circuit diagram that I believe his name is James H. A guy on YouTube emailed me when I was asking him about the original project that spawned the original one of these. So I encourage you to go check out his stuff. He made an electrothermal accelerator as well. It's better than this one. And he also beat me to the punch with uh, plasma vortex rings at atmospheric pressure, which is something I have been working on for a while. And there might be a video on those on this channel in a little bit. But until then, this thing. So this uses just a spark gap to generate plasma. It just discharges this through the spark gap after using this high voltage generator to send a low power spark across the gap that these can discharge through. And it uses this coil, which is supposed to be hot glued in place, but has fallen off, to prevent this from shorting through the capacitors. And it also has a little spark gap right here that this sparks through so it builds up enough voltage to jump the gap in there. And I can put up a picture of the um, circuit diagram. And again, it's basically the circuit diagram he, e he emailed me when I asked him how he made plasma without aluminum foil. I'm not going to talk about too much of this mess in here, but if you want me to talk about it more, maybe I'll post a second video of more in-depth about how the circuit diagram I showed fits into this package. But basically, capacitor bank, 350 volt generator, 12 volt lipo, 3 volt lipo, 3 volt lipo does this, 12 volt lipo runs the charger, and then charge switch, indicator light for charging, safety for the high voltage generator discharge, and just a but push button right there, the battery's not in it right now, to trigger the sparker, which discharges the thing and shoots it. Pretty much the only addition I made this little thing that comes off the capacitor bank, I pull this out, I stick in one with two wires, and I can short it to discharge the capacitor bank to make sure it's empty when I'm done with it. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Let's uh, shoot at some things now. Number one. So the goal here was to compare if the special penetrating rounds did any better than the ball rounds, and, well, they both got stopped by the apple core, so that test didn't really work, but it's very cool looking. They're both, see there's the, there's the penetrator one and there's the ball one. They almost hit each other. You can see the, the trails. And then also, it's a good indication, I wasn't sure if these penetrator ones were tumbling or not. But it looks like, over this short distance at least, they are not tumbling. Or at least this one wasn't. So that's good to know. As you can see, it, it poked it right there. It went in, looks like the, just the tip went in. I never knew I could hurt this way. It caught it. It got stuck in the ginger snap cookie. That, I did not expect that one. Okay, we're gonna have to go to the penetrator rounds. These need to be punished. And heartache number two was when you came back again. You came back. But never meant to stay. Yes, I've got heartache spots. No, not again. It happened again. Ooh, that's high voltage, that's wet. <laughs> no, I thought I was safe that time. By the number, troubles by the score. Every day you love me less, each day I love you more. Yes, I've got heartaches by the number, a love that I can't win. But the day that I stopped counting
That's to be my world of end Heartache number three was when you called me And said that you were coming back to stay With hope 